Hello, I'm Arnos, and this is Voyage to Farland. A Pokemon Mystery Dungeon type roguelike RPG where permanent per, per, I can't speak a word of English where death is permanent like any like most roguelikes like oh, there, there are a few exceptions like oh. of 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 course of course when I say there are exceptions my brain goes you don't remember any exceptions shut up don't as a dreadmore there you go there's one uh and pokemon mystery dungeon you can't die yes as you can see the game is very very similar to the Mystery Dungeon games, which I view as a positive thing, because when I was younger, I enjoyed the hell out of the first one. I think it was red. And also, just like a Mystery Dungeon, instead of Pokemon, you get pets. So I have found a toy robot, which is a nice, which is a nice, which is a nice little thing to have come along with you, I suppose. But there is one issue I have. Uh, I had to redo a recording because because of that issue then, actually. You can't walk through NPCs, which for enemies would be fine. But in other games of this caliber, you've been able to walk and you just switch places, which, which wouldn't cause a problem. Uh, the fact that that isn't here causes an issue because I was trapped in a corner... And I couldn't get out because I can't walk past my little robot friend. I can't, I can't do it. I can't, I can walk diagonally, which is lucky. But if I'm a, if I'm a dead, if I'm in a dead end and that little bastard's there and there's nothing that makes me go down, I'm a little screwed. So, enough. So that's my one little gripe for the time being. Also, you can talk to this little girl and you'll play a game of, uh, let me get, now she's now she's tra now she's trapped. Great. Okay, let's just ignore and just get onto the game. Unfortunately, I was supposed to do the training because. Oh hello. Boom. Oh shit! I missed. So this is I see I can't walk past him, which. Irritates the hell of me because there's really no reason for me to have this pet if he can kill me this easily. I'm gonna die on it. Yep. Oh, for fuck you. Yeah, they level up if they kill you, which is kind of pointless because because you're dead. You don't come back to life. So honestly, the robot really isn't worth it. There is no reason for me to ever get the robot because he just blocks my way. I can't switch places with him. Yeah, um, I'm doing the training, I've, because the training, when you just go straight for the game, there's generally this issue of difficulty, because you can't, unless you get, if, unless you get lucky and find items that you want, that you want and need to get the, the gap, I can't speak, to get the damage done, then you're a little, you're a little screwed. But luckily in training, the enemies are easy, and it gives you a chance to actually find weapons to get you a quick start on your damage and stuff like that. It gives you some nice little items. It's basically the, rec the recommended way of getting started if you want to avoid painstaking difficulty. Because I leveled up. Because the developer of the game was also thank you for handing out the keys and I was lucky enough to grab myself one so thank you for that also what was I gonna say yes if you just go on straight about trying to play this game you could have an issue I mean the game the developer pretty much requested for, hey, does anyone want to sort of rage through my game? And when a developer says, yeah, if you're probably going to get angry at this game, you're probably going to get angry. I can't believe I've done that second time. You're probably going to get angry at this game. When the dev says that, you know it's something to look forward to. 
Also, when the dev writes a guide on how not to die, it makes me think, oh, it looks like I'm not supposed to have an easy time with this. There are some different things about this game compared to other roguelikes. There are different aspects, like there's this special beetle, I believe it's called. Some sort of viper beetle, maybe? Oh, I leveled up again. A viper beetle, maybe? I can't remember. But basically, it spins you around like nobody's business. And you it just tosses you about and you get completely wrecked. When you encounter that thing on your first run, it's, um, it's a little bit scary. It's not exactly something you expect. Also, it's very scary when you encounter it with no items. You get completely slaughtered. Hence why training is generally the best option. Okay, if, also, there is a health bar up there. So you have to be careful on how much ground you cover. Because of the fact it could go badly for you. I'm trying... I can never remember... Luckily, there is a button to remember how... All the controls and how to actually... Oh, yeah, that's it. Okay, I did get it right. I was trying to figure out how to change direction so I can show off something. You can actually... The reason I'm picking up all these items is not because I want to replace them. It is because I can throw them. And it's a nice little way of getting a little bit of extra damage on your opponent before they reach you. Which is a thing I'll gladly take. As the game, at the start, yeah, this is how my experience of the game went. It's like, okay, first first time I went straight into it, didn't bother with, didn't bother with the training. Um, got completely slaughtered, did not take me long. So I went and did the training. Did fine. I was okay. I was okay. I, I lived. I managed to get through the first the first area, the forest, easily without problem. Occasionally dipping down to slightly low health. Then I restored myself and complete. Oh whoops! And I kicked ass. Easy. Nothing. Nothing to worry about. Job done. So I tried it again. On the next level, I got completely slaughtered. So, yeah. Oh, for God's sake. Although, this time around, I'm getting a lot more food than I used to. Okay, that's the first dungeon. That's the train dungeon done. And now we get into the actual game type thing. Luckily, I don't have a robot because I hate the damn robot. He gets me stuck. The cute forest. And there was a trap and it missed. These beads are... Oh, my inventory's full. Good lord. How much shit did I pick up? Oh, let's equip that. It's a better shield. You come down so I can throw stuff at you. Here, take my shield. Or don't, okay. Whatever you want. It's fine with... Oh, Talon. Definitely equip that. Yeah, the weapons do have attack, attack bar. Yeah, you just have to pay a little, a little bit of attention and you should... Get that. The if you press F, you will fire a thing at them. Yes, this is the Viper Beetle, which not as scary as it once seemed to be. But that was just because I had range. Yeah, they. I was talking about special abilities, which I completely ignored. Oh, I leveled up again. Sweet. Yeah. Um. Oh, look, there's Nosferatu. Yeah, the game has a little, oh, a little, some little weird enemies. Like an Aka Oni, which I believe probably means Red Demon, I'm guessing. Because there's different names for the different colours of one. There's like Our Oni, which is either blue or purple. I don't fully remember. It's it's something. I don't really want that. I'd rather have food. I want to murder Nosferatu. Let me do that, please. Nosferatu, where you at? Hello. Ow. Okay, Nosferatu is down. Not not too much of a problem. Akaoni is also down. What was I saying? Oh yeah, these special abilities. Look. Whoa! He gave me the evil... Oh, I'm confused. Okay, Nosferatu. Yeah. Like I was saying, there's some interesting... 
Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm not dealing with Nosferatu again. He murdered my health earlier. Yeah, so as I was saying, the there are special things like the seesaw trap. Like, why is there Nosferatu everywhere? Could you stop that, please? Stop it. So, as I said, there are special abilities for certain people. Like the Viper Beetle, he will grab you and spin you and smash you into a wall. The music just got very different all of a sudden, and I've never experienced that before. Uh, like the seesaw trap, you land on it, it flicks you about. Not pr pretty cool effects, not too bad. Obviously, the game goes for a fairly simple graphical roguelike, which isn't a problem to be honest. I mean, it's more as as with everything, as with every game ever, it's gameplay over uh, graphical fidelity, which is not a problem. I mean, graphics help, but. Honestly, you can't really complain. They are what they are, and just get used to it. So what have we got here then? A meld pouch. Alright then. Uh, while I'm here, I can actually show off the light scroll. It just shows off the entire map, makes the job easy. It also shows the enemies, which is nice. The An hour only. Okay, then it was, it was blue. Okay. I also have something else I'd like to test out, if I can... These beads... They, they're basically, it's, effect, it's sort of like magic, in a sense. Also, they, they have different abilities, I think, yeah, that one makes me swap with... That one makes me swap with whoever I hit with it. Okay. So, in the beginning... No, I don't want to swap places, that's stupid. In the beginning... Not a... Strategy isn't really employed as much as it probably should. I feel like strategy isn't as necessary. Later in the game, though, my lord, it gets a lot more important. In the first sort of dungeon type area, you don't really have an issue with enemies or encounters. You just sort of, you sort of get the job done and you don't really have anything to worry about. If I missed then, I would have been dead. So I kind of... I was a little, a little bit risky with that particular one. I'm going to take that. I'm also going to eat that as I have the no space, so I might as well use it. Hello. Goodbye. Yeah, so strategy will quickly become something you need to look for. Look. Look. In. I can't, honestly, I can't speak a word. It's something that you have to employ. I'll trade anything for my wrath. This lady's weird. I'll trade any, I'll trade my wrath for something to eat. No. Because, too bad. Because the wrath doesn't really go anywhere. You can go on this water bit, there's no, but there's nowhere to go on it. So basically you trade food for nothing of any use. And you can do it multiple times as well, which makes it weirder. So I'm just going to continue... This is where I'm going to die. Without a doubt. I know I am. Twilight Stream. This looks different. To the last one I had. I swear I was in a cave last time. So this may go better. This may go worse. I don't know. If my inventory is full. <laughs> which is not good. Do I have a light scroll which I can just sort of waste? I do. Alright then. This map is considerably bigger. Okay. That's a bit that's a bit different. I'm gonna eat this oatmeal cookie and hope for the best. Thank you. It's I this level is gonna need I think probably needs some music, because Crushing Waves Ratapult, okay. To, oh hello, grey lady. Okay, I'm gonna yeah, this area... Oh, damn. Uh, one word now. Bash your face in. Bash your face in. What you drop? A talon. Not good. Steel shield. Okay, um, equip that now. Wait, what talon have I got? Talon two. Okay, that's fine. Let's just put this on. Okay, she can attack. But I have extra defense, so it's fine. What's it saying? Hey, okay, this area needs some music. It's... A little odd 
just hearing waves. I mean, it's... It feels like it's supposed to add atmosphere, but it kind of... Oh, shit. Yeah, the seesaw trap is a little... A little dangerous. Kind of... Kind of... Kind of very unsurpri uh, unsurprising. Very surprising. Oh, no. Evil over. Thank you. Yeah, the lack of music in this area is a little disappointing. But I'm sure that can be added on to. I mean, there's no reason why not. But there's no reason why you can't just put on your own music in the background, which is generally what I do a lot of the time anyway. Monster scroll. I wonder what that does. Does that summon monsters? Because if it does, I might be in trouble. Where'd it go? There it is. That could have been a mis- that- yeah, that was probably a mistake. I'm gonna take a guess and say that was definitely a mistake. So, eat. Oh dear. Um, pummel scroll. Read that. Boom. Okay. Now that is one way of getting for a sticky situation. Stepped on Trevor Trap. Oh, another trap as well. Warp pouch. What is that? A steel shield. It might have a plus on it. Tomahawk. Is that better? Okay, the steel shield is it AP7. Whereas the Talon is AP6 plus 2. What did I just do? What did I just do? I'm not sure what I just did. Just put that on. Picked up. Okay, just carry on. Oh my. Well, I've gotten further than I did before. Oh, damn. Come here. I'm probably doing better because I actually found food this time around. I found one piece of food last time and it was very, very odd. Luckily. Oh, hello. Miss Mask Punk. Oh, I thought you were the exit, damn. Luckily, there's mu Luckily there is music this time around, which definitely makes the stage better. Even if it is pretty simple. Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> Son of a bitch. As soon as I attacked him for the first time, I thought, if I miss, I'm going to die. I should probably heal. I attacked him again. I missed. I died. Not, 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 not the best. So, that, that was Voyage to Farland. A roguelike RPG type deal. Simple graphics. Simple music. Definitely not simple difficulty. The game is pretty hard and requires you to actually make some decisions before you actually do your next move. And also, when the, when the developer writes a guide on how not to die, you probably know you might be in for a little bit of trouble. So, this has been Voyage to Farland, a game I rather enjoy, actually. Despite, despite the sim, despite the simplicity of it, the overall gameplay I find quite fun, um, and I've been happy to play it and bring it to your attention. I'm not so sure about this stuff though. Rescue, you can request a rescue. Accept rescue. Invalid code. Request rescue. Rescue code copied to clipboard. So I think you can actually paste code from clipboard. Code verified. Okay. Not. So I think you can actually try and rescue yourself. I'm not entirely sure about this. So I'm just going to leave it alone. Maybe that's something I have to look into. Or something. Or maybe I look. I don't know. Maybe it's, it, it, it's, it's in there. Mystery Dungeon has this as well, so I don't see why this game shouldn't either. Obviously, those two have a very similar, similar... After all, that is what the developer went for. I mean, he even says it himself, pretty much. So yeah, I've enjoyed this. I've certainly enjoyed it. Glad I've had a chance to play it. And, um... 
yeah, I will leave a link in the description to the website to where it is located. Mm. And, and, and until next time, where I will certainly be playing more games of indie caliber or otherwise. So until then, goodbye. Thank you.